Good day guys, welcome to my channel. Um, this is the Logic Tutor. Um, we give videos on practicals and uh, mathematics, physics and other sciences including engineering courses on this channel. If all this sounds interesting, just click on the subscribe button and also like our videos and share and don't forget to use the notification bell to tell you when we drop our new video. So in this video, we want to look at the mechanics practical of the NECO 2023 and as we have always said, we used to say this every time we shoot our videos that uh, this is not the exact question but this is the likely question uh, that you might possibly meet. So every part of this video is just to give us an idea and to enlighten us or to prepare us ahead of the exam. It might be, it might not be. So now let's look at the question and the diagram and the diagram first before going through the procedures that we need to using the question so now if you look at this diagram very well this is a and b actually we are not setting up these two at the same time we set up this and then take readings then we set up the other one and also take reading as well so now if you look at this you have a meter root here then a string also mounted on the uh, retail stand and then what the question requires us to do with this particular diagram is uh, you, are, you are required to arrange all the materials given to you according to the diagrams. So then, you arrange the apparatus as shown in A. That is diagram A. Measure and record the length L0 of the spring. So which means after hanging the spring with nothing, with no load on the spring, you measure the value of what? L0, which is the length of the spring. And you record it at the top of the table. Then after that, then we have to hang a mass. M equals 50 but before we do that okay yeah during the presence of the meter room, we hang mass 50 then we know there will be a particular extension so that extension will be calculated by what ln that is the length the new length when you hang the mass m minus what the length when there was no mass and so that will give you the actual extension of the spring so then you do the same procedure for masses like 70, 90, 110, 130 and record, record the length Lm and also determine what Lm and L0. Actually this might not be in your table directly but you might put it in your table as well. You can put your Lm in your table but instead of that just make a table E. Just calculate your E directly. In the table. So then what next? After those various marks, we have to remove the meter rule. Okay, let me show you the downside of the question. Okay, we have to remove the meter rule uh, from the setup and then attach a pointer at base L equals 50. So I will show you the base from the diagram B. Then extend the spring beyond the spring downwards. Okay, extend the spring beyond the pointer. It should be the pointer downward and what and allow to oscillate okay let's look at the diagram again now the meter rule has been removed so what next is to add a mass m on that spring and meanwhile a pointer will be attached here this pointer will have its point its mount at the base of the mass of which is not well done in this diagram so actually it's supposed to be here okay so it should be at the base of the diagram, at, of the mass. So then we will now allow this, you can push it up a bit, then for it to oscillate downward. If you put it beyond it, upward, okay, it should be downward. Let this base turns, touches the point, then we read the number of complete 10 oscillations and the time taken for it according to the procedure. Let's look at the other ones. So we're told that in the other procedure, we're told that uh, we determine the time t for 10 complete oscillations, then evaluate period t equals time t over number of oscillations, which is 10, then we evaluate t squared, that's the period squared. Then after that, we repeat that procedure, hanging the mass of 70, 90, 110, and 130 gram. So then we evaluate t and t squared in each case. After that, we plot the graph of E against T squared. So tabulate your reading and find this with this. Now, all these parameters are ah, they related? So looking at it mathematically, we can see some certain things here. Now, there is a formula which says acceleration due to gravity is 4 pi squared 
T over C squared for a spring. So the extension of the spring over uh, multiplied by 4 pi squared, which is uh, as a constant right there. So having this now, E, and we're going to plot the graph of E against T squared. So which means from the formula here, we are going to have 4 pi squared. So separate it, E over C squared. So don't forget this is our slope. This is the slope of the graph. So that is why the gravity is going to be what? 4 pi squared x. So this experiment is just based on the determination of acceleration due to gravity. Yeah, looking at it. So plot uh, the graph of E against T squared. So the slope of the graph should give us E over T squared. And plotting it into this formula, we should be able to get the value of our acceleration due to gravity. And let's look at the diagram uh, A and go do the setup according to it. So we want to take the measurement of the spring itself, which is L0. So uh, from what I have here, if I pick it up, okay, from there, okay, let me just hang it here, yeah, okay, if I hang the uh, spring here for proper view, the top length here falls at 44, that's the length, the uh, head of the spring falls at 44, meanwhile, the downside which is here falls at 50.8. It actually falls at 50 points. Okay, that is 50.8. 50.8. So the change in this value is 50.8 minus 44. So that gives 6.8. So the value of L naught is 6.8. 6.8. So that will be recorded on two decimal place. Now the next is to hang the mass of 50 and see the extension in length. So I make sure that when you want to measure the uh, actual new length, you have to what? You have to maintain balance. So in doing that now, I have 44 here. Then the new length here is now, okay, I can use a pin to point it. I can point it out here, the new length. So that gives me 56.5. So if I make 56.5, so that value 56.5, the change is 56.5 minus 44. So that is the new length. So the new length is 12.5. So if I subtract 6.8 from it, I'll be having 5.7. So the actual extension is now 5.7. So that will be recorded in the table of extension. 5.70. Let that be in two decimal place. So then the next is to hang the mass of 70 and see the new extension. So from that 70, then I make sure that it's at equilibrium. So then I can measure again. So that gives me 60.8. So 60.8 okay let me take that measurement again okay that's 60.7 so if i have 60 60.7 minus 44 the initial position so that gives me the length the new length of the spring to be 16.7 so i'm going to subtract the L naught from it, so which is what minus 6.8, so that gives me 9.90. So that 9.90 when the mass of 70 is and 9.90. So now the next thing is to hang the mass of uh, 90, so and that is just by introducing uh, 20 to this 70. So by introducing that, what value did that have next? So I have to measure. So I think I have 60, 65 on dots. So 65 minus 44. So that gives me 21. So if I subtract 6.8 from that, 
I'm going to have 14.2. So the value here will now be 14.2. 14.20. So now let's increase the mass to 110. So how do I get 110? I can double my 50 and then add 1. So to double my 50, I just double my 50 here. You double the 50 and then add 10 to it. So that would be 110. So then I measure the new length and extension. So how do I do that? So here I think I'll be having 69.5. So 69.5 minus 44, which is the initial position, gives me 25.5. So if I subtract 6.8, which is L0 from heat, I'll be having 18.70. So going for 130 of the length now, I have added 50, 50, 20, so then I will add 10 to this, so that is 130. So now let's consider the new length of uh, the spring. Okay, it's falling at 73.4. So 73.4, Minus 44, that gives us 29.4. So if I subtract 6.8 from that, I'll be having 22.6. Okay, this is the setup for diagram B, where we are meant to uh, make the mass M as suspended and on the spring, and then there is a pointer here that we point towards the base of the mass, and we're going to oscillate it and count. 10 oscillations and the 10 oscillations will be read when that base returns to the pointer. So that is how we are going to make it. So let's take it now as we move, we count the 10 oscillations and we make uh, our uh, recordings of time T taken for complete 10 oscillations. So now let's go for. Okay, now let's go. I will drive it down a bit and allow it to move. So then when it returns, to that point, we count it. So, okay, I have to shift this towards the front a bit so that it won't keep eating the uh, pointer. So, let's move on. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, what value does that give us in time? So, we have uh, 5.95 seconds. 5.95 seconds. So we have 5.95 seconds. So the next is to angle the mass of 70. So and then see, can you see the point has gone downward beyond the pointer? So I have to drag the pointer downward in that direction too. So the extent that it has to be in line with the base. So I can actually set them in a straight line to point at the base. Okay, yeah. Now let's move on again. I count 10 oscillations. So we go again. Then we go one, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that gives us uh, 7.31. So we have 7.31 seconds. 7.31 seconds. So we go for angular mass of 90. So and that is by introducing this for 90. Then I drive down the pointer at that particular point. Then I resonate in such a way that. Yeah, so now let's go again. One, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two is 8.47 when 90 is being added. So now let's go for 110. So then I will add 50 and then add um, 10 to it. So has gone downward again so i have to bring the pointer downward as well to suit the point so now let's oscillate one two go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so the value for 110 is 9.30 so i think that is okay 9.30 so after that, we go for 130. So 130 is by 120, and then we are 10. 
So after this, we oscillate. We bring down the, a pointer downward to the base so that we can have a proper oscillation. So then we go. Now let's move. Uh, seeing it down here, you can see the pointer is at the base, it's not oscillating. They balance up with each other. So now let's go. One, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that gives us uh, ten point zero zero straight forward. Ten point zero. Now we have actually uh, done the experiment. So we've gotten the value of t. So then to get the value of period t, which is small t over n, we divide all these values here by 10. So that is how uh, we got here. So then after that, we square the values we get here, and that we get the t squared. So for us to now plot the graph, we are plotting the graph of P, which is the extension on the vertical axis, and we are plotting the t squared on the horizontal axis. So let's plot the graph and see how it looks like. So we want to plot the graph now, and as you can see, um, as you can see, this is the title of the graph, graph of E against T squared. And the scale we are using is two centimeters to 0 0.1 seconds on the horizontal axis, which is label X axis. So, but don't call it X axis here, you call it uh, T squared axis. So. Here will be t squared in second squared, and up here you are going to have e e in centimeter. So that is actually how to plot the graph. So now on the vertical axis, I have four centimeter to five centimeter. That means these two big box all together is four centimeter. So which is five. Uh, which means two centimeter is going to be what 2.5 so you can actually write your scale two centimeters to 2.5 centimeter or four centimeter to five centimeters so now let's start plotting the value because this is our table as, as shown on the board on the other time so we have to be fixing our e and our t squared and plot the points so now let's fix it after fixing i'll show you then i'll plot the points so we have plotted the first point that says 5.70 goes for 0 0.354. So this is 5.70 here, 5.70. So we trace that down to 0 0.354 here. So let's plot the rest. So after plotting the point on the graph, we can see the first point here, the second point here, the third point is here and the fourth point is here and the fifth point is here so where is the best fit line if we take these three are they the best fits if we take this are they the best fits so let's pick a best fit line and we have to pick a line that we make every other one that is not on the line distributed evenly one on the other side the others on the other side or two on the other side it, the lines that are not on the point should be distributed evenly so let's pick that up now so this is the line okay we have to neglect this at actually a mistake so we take this one straight and you see the other two points that are not on the line one is here and the other is here distributed on opposite side of the line so the other three point falls on the line so let's find the slope of the line so this is the slope of the line this is changing e this is changing t squared so the slope s is going to be this over this so now let's calculate that and see the first point here is your e2 and this one is e1 so you subtract them then the first point the point here is t squared one t squared two and here is t squared one so you subtract them to get the value change in t squared and change in e then you divide the two answers to get your slope Okay, now we have plot our graph and this is it. So we have actually determined the slope S of the graph, which is 24.75. And that would be uh, centimeter per second square. So I said the slope S 
is equal to 24.75 centimeter per second square. That's the value of the slope. Now, we're going to determine the value of acceleration due to gravity. Let's see if we get close to it. And I believe we all know that G is always 9.8 meter per second square. So as it is, meter per second square. Uh, or probably write it in form of 9.8 meter per second square. So, uh, in a nutshell, let us just plug in g equals 4 pi square x. So let's plug s into that. So plugging s into this value, I'll be having 4 times, let's use the value of this 3.142 all square times 24.75. Now don't forget this 24.75 is in centimeter per second square. So let me divide this by 100. So that I will convert it to meter. So probably we are going to get something like this. So now let's look at it. So I have 3.142 squared. So that gives me 9.87. Okay. If I multiply that by 4, by 4, I have 39.4866 as it is here. You can see that. So now then I will multiply that by 24. 24.75 24.75 so that gives me can you see 977 so if I divide this by 100 as it is in that I'll be having 9.773 so the overall value here is 9.773 so of which I can approximately write it as 9.8 don't forget I've divided it 100, so it gives me meter per second square. So it shows the validity and the level of consistency of the experiment. So there are other precautions you take when taking the measurement of your uh, meter rule, uh, of your spring length on the meter rule. Make sure you avoid parallax error and then uh, 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 make sure that there is a uh, accurate measurements as far as the script is concerned uh, also ensure that you you set up the apparatus as it is given in the question and at the same time you ensure that uh, the, the fit the fittings of those setup is tight and to avoid any shaking or uh, division in the experiment so thanks for watching if you find this video interesting and you want to get more wonderful videos just subscribe to this channel and share our videos. Thanks for watching.